So this interesting shape right here is what we're going to be making. And because we're going to use subdivision services, we get as much smoothness as we want, or as much as our computer can handle. Hello. So I found this tutorial on the YouTubes and it caught my attention because I had no idea how I would personally model it. <laughs> But I watched a little bit and I was thinking there's probably a, a simpler way. So uh, I tried a couple of things and I think I found a faster way of going about it. So here's what you do. You create a cylinder, obviously. Give it 16 sides. We don't need that much resolution. And then just scale it in Z to your desired height. That works for me. So just move it off to the side. Shift D, create another one right here. Perfect. And then rotate X 90 degrees. So they're offset. And the uh, next step is to replace all of these angons with uh, uh, a grid cap, basically. And so we can delete this face, select the border, control F, grid fill, and then just spin that into the correct orientation. But I do that just so much that I just created a script that automates that. So I put it in the exact same delete menu, so all that uh, X, delete and grid fill. And it does all of that in like one step. So it's a free script, by the way, it's not included with Blender, but I, it is part of the Armor Toolkit, which you can get for free. There we go. Perfect. And the next thing we want to do is just delete this half and then delete this half. And now, we want to make note of how many cuts we have here. So in that case, that's three cuts. So just add that same number of cuts to the side. Might be more cuts for you, depending on the resolution of cylinder that you used. And simply select those two open uh, loops and bridge them. And originally, I thought I would just be able to use the uh, built-in interpolation. As you can see, it does give you a little bit of smoothing but I couldn't quite get there. But maybe one day, if there's like a custom profile shape we can draw here, we'll be able to get that like perfect X. So if you're watching this video and it's like 10 years old, then just make sure and check. <laughs> but for now, we can't do that. So let's just undo and use a simple bridge and just add one cut in the center. We're gonna do this manually and scale this down like this. And now add maybe two cuts right here and then two more cuts right here and then select all of these edges and we're going to use an add-on called edge flow you can find it for free i'll link to it if you want to download it and once you install it you can press ctrl e and you'll find this option here at the bottom that says edge flow so click on it boop, and it'll automatically try to create that smooth transition for you so you can click on it more than once by the way and uh, because we're using so little geometry, we can actually just select these edges and sort of scale them um, ourselves. So that's one of the advantages of using such uh, low resolution with sub Ds. So we can do that and get a bit more of a circle there. Cool. And now what we could do is, for example, uh, use some sort of Boolean to cut a perfect circle in there. But I'm just so lazy. <laughs> I'm just going to select this like so, and then just grow my selection, inset. And I want to inset enough because I'm going to add some chamfers here. So I'm going to give it plenty of room and it's okay if you like go inside of your own selection, not too bad. I'm just going to do that. Right click and you sh hopefully have a another add-on installed called loop tools because this one is built into Blender. All you have to do is enable it. There's no installation required. And once you enable it, it'll appear right here. Right click, right at the top. Uh, loop tools, make circle or something like that. So that's what I'm using. I just pulled it out and renamed it. So make circle and uh, make sure you disable the flatten option because by default, we want it to try to follow that curvature after it makes the circle. So just disable the flatten option and it'll give us a slightly better result. And now it's safe to just delete all of that. Perfect circles everywhere, cool. And let's continue by bridging this, bridging this. And here's where you could select by angle and start adding creasing, but I'm just gonna use a script for that. 
just to save some time. So I have a script that selects all the hard edges and I have another one that applies full creasing to those uh, select edges. And let's subdivide this. Let's use auto smooth and we get something that looks like this. Ooh. And uh, oh, here's a cool thing you can do if you like using creasing at 100% like me. So I, I sort of borrowed this from ZBrush. We can have two subdivision modifiers. So just hover over this one, Shift D, go to the second one and disable the use creases option. Ooh, so that way it looks like we have a, a bevel, uh, but we don't. Cool. And if you want it to be sharper, you can turn this up. In fact, let me use a matte cap that's a little bit a little better for shiny objects. So we can turn this up or we can turn it down. Cool, so I'm gonna leave it at two for now, just so it's not too heavy. And uh, I can, instead of selecting all of the hard edges again, we can just select one of these creased edges. Shift G, select similar crease. And now bevel all of that. Ah, so we're getting there. Then maybe we can select, we could sort of select this and then extrude along normals, but this inside shape is gonna be following the curvature that we have here as well. And I don't think I want that. So instead, I'm gonna add one loop cut here, one loop cut here, and I am going to bevel these. And that way you can see how it's like shorter on this side and it's a bit longer on this side. And that's fine with me. That's like what I'm going for now. I don't know if the original sh uh, art piece I showed you is actually like that. And then just extrude along normals like that. And uh, oh yeah, let's sharpen those edges. And that is another way of creating this space shape.